There are a lot of great flip top workbenches on YouTube, but I wanted one that can hold a lot of weight. So I've come up with this design, all made out of hardwood plywood. It holds a total of 58 kilos, which is about 130 pounds. Most of it's thanks to this 60 millimeter, which is about two and a half inches worth of pipe. I'm starting by using a plan that I made from the online SketchUp tool. It's completely free. You can download the link for this one below, although it's very specific to the tools that you're using. This model uses two full sheets of plywood. You can see there's a bit of a gap left over on the second one. That's for future modifications. I've also printed out the final product. It's good to have color codes in your diagrams, especially when you've got a lot of parts that are gonna be sandwiched together. Rough cuts never have to be super accurate, but it's always good to at least get it square. I am cutting a little bit oversized to accommodate for the kerf of the blade. Now I'm not sponsored by Diablo, but these blades, they cut like butter. pre-cutting and labeling all my parts is a much better way to keep inventory. I'm centering the tools the best I can, although it's not going to be perfectly balanced, the tools have a different center of mass. And fairly obviously, pre-drilling both parts ensures that the old thread that I'm using will line up. This is a lesson in you get what you pay for. I didn't want to spend 30 to $60 on a hole saw I'm only going to use once. This is a hole saw kit. Each different diameter sits within those grooves and it is complete trash. A little tip on applying glue, give your part a little wiggle, helps it suck to the timber. I was fairly disappointed with this nail gun. This is only hardwood plywood, it's not solid hardwood. I am using the longest nails that this unit can carry, but still it didn't drive them all the way through. I'm gonna have to come back with a hammer. It's fair to say I'm a little paranoid that the weight of this thing is going to collapse on itself, so I put a lot more screws than necessary. With the parts pre-cut, it's one big Lego set.
and I made two of these. I'm not taking any chances with the frame wandering around while I drill it to the base. I'm using a shorter nail now, seems to go through fine. Lined up to within a millimeter each side, that's good enough for me. I'm putting three coach screws in each side of the base, helps it tie it to the frame. Cutting my pipe to size with a four inch grinder. This was donated by a friend of mine. Really appreciate that because I couldn't find anything that I needed at my local hardware store. Attaching the top to the frame was a little tricky. Not sure how I was going to do it. I used the off cut of the pipe just to line it up a little bit and eventually I used some clamps to help pull the pipe through. An M10 bolt with washer and nut on each side prevents the table from racking. Secure the table, I'm using a simple bolt. Something I should have done earlier is run the math. The drop saw is 22 kilos, it's about 48 pounds. The planar thicknesser comes in at 36 kilos, which is 80 pounds. The total weight of my tools, 58 kilos or 128 pounds. Safe to say I was a little worried that this thing's gonna collapse. It was much cheaper to use all thread for this application than I can just cut it to size. This was my first test with just the drop saw. This is in real time. I was a little bit worried, but after it flipped over, it actually worked really well. No racking, no movement, and it didn't fall on its head. We can rinse and repeat for the planar thicknesser. I'm temporarily adding some bricks to lower the center of mass. I ended up removing these. There wasn't any real risk of the table flipping over. This is the first test with both the tools. You can see I'm a little hesitant. It turns out this is a lot easier to flip when you have a tool on each side. It helps counterbalance a little bit. There's always a debate on whether you should finish your shop tools 
the way I see it, you have to take pride in your work, as long as you know you've done the best you can. There's no point making a build video without showing a test. I'm going to let this one play out. Thanks guys for watching. You can see the link in the description for the plans that I made, as well as the SketchUp file itself.